Chapter 14 About an hour later, the same doctor who transplanted my father's kidney into DeAndre showed up to Chase's room. By now, both of Chase's parents returned. They sat quietly, listening to our conversation. Dr. Yang, I have something to ask you. Hello, Mr. McDonald. It's good to see you again. I hope you and your mother are holding up well. I lowered my head and rubbed the back of my hair. Thanks. We're trying. Dr. Yang smiled. So, what did you want to ask me? My eyes met both of Chase's parents. Then they turned to look at my unconscious friend. I want to know if you can transplant my kidney into Chase. Chase's parents gasped. Dr. Yang stepped closer to me. Are you sure you want to do this? He leaned closer to whisper in my ear. They didn't guilt you into doing this, did they? I stepped back and waved my hands around. No, not at all. I just want to save my best friend's life. The way my father saved DeAndre Williams' life. Dr. Yang adjusted his glasses. A smile formed on my face. Like father, like son. Isn't that how the saying goes? Yes, that's the saying, Andy. Dr. Yang nodded his head. Well, we'd have to do a bunch of tests to see if you're a match by blood and tissue. Also, since you're underage, we need to get your mother's permission. Oh, I bellowed. This scared me. I didn't know how my mother would react to this idea. Yeah, we don't normally use living donors who are under the age of 18, especially not as young as you, Dr. Yang explained. But since this is a dire situation and if your mother approves, we can perform the tests to see if you are a match. After my conversation with Dr. Yang, I ran all the way home. Okay, I walked most of it. When I got home, I found my mother still asleep. My attempt to wake her didn't work. My mother slept heavy thanks to the sleeping pills. Yes, she never gave them up, even after she overdosed. To be honest, I didn't believe my mother would want me to donate my kidney. So I figured I'd just forge her signature in a note saying she gives me permission. After another long walk back to the hospital, I asked the receptionist to call Dr. Yang. She called, and I got lucky he didn't leave yet. Dr. Yang met me in the front lobby and asked me to follow him back to his office. Inside Dr. Yang's office, he pulled a chair out for me. I sat down. He sat behind his desk and crossed his arms. So, Andy, what did your mother say? My hands shook from nerves, but I reached inside my pocket and pulled out my forged note. Here, here you are, Dr. Yang. My mother signed it, saying it was okay. Dr. Yang held the note up. He read it, humming the entire time. This scared me. The way he read my note, I thought he knew I'd forged it. All right, Mr. McDonald. I'm glad your mother is on board with the donation. Wow, I suppose that was wrong. He bought it. Yeah, uh, I'm glad she's okay with it. Dr. Yang leaned forward. Okay, Mr. McDonald, before we do any of the tests to see if you're a match with Chase, I'll need you to speak to someone. Who? You need to talk with a social worker. A social worker? I asked, scratching my head. Yes, they need to give you a psychosocial evaluation. They will see how your mental state is, and they will go over a lot of the risks with the donation. Dr. Yang picked up his phone and talked briefly with someone. After hanging up the phone, he stood up from his desk. The door opened and the husky-built woman walked into the room. Hello, Dr. Yang. She turned to face me. Hello, you must be Andy. I reached my hand out toward her. Yes, I am. I'm Andy MacDonald. The woman shook my hand. It's nice to meet you. My name is Clara Davis. I'll be your social worker. Dr. Yang left the room, shutting the door behind him. Clara sat down in Dr. Yang's chair. She opened a thick book and pulled a pen out. Okay, Andy, let's get started, shall we? I shrugged my shoulders. Yeah, let's do this. Clara, my social worker, went over a bunch of things. First, she asked me if Chase's family was pressuring me to donate, just as Dr. Yang did. I told her no, and how this was something I wanted to do. Then Clara asked me about my home life. This, I admit, was tough to talk about. But I did. I told her about my father's passing. Also, I told her about how his kidneys had saved two people's lives, including a nice young man who I've met. Now my best friend was dying and I could save his life. 
This I wanted to do. No, I needed to do. Clara talked about the financial situation with the surgery. She told me how Chase's insurance will cover everything. This sounded great, not having to worry about paying for the surgery. The next thing she brought up didn't sound too great. So, Andy, I heard you play football. Uh, yeah, I play for my high school team. Clara fiddled the pen around in her hand. That's awesome. What position do you play? Quarterback. That's sweet. And tell me, Andy, you have a big game coming up this Friday? I sat up straight in my chair. Yeah, it's the state championship game. Oh, congratulations on making it that far. That's awesome. Clara stopped fiddling with her pen. She put the pen down on the desk. She placed her hands together. I have to tell you, Andy, if you donate your kidney, you won't be able to play football ever again. This shocked me. I didn't understand why I wouldn't be able to play again. What do you mean, even after recovering from the surgery, I still won't be able to play football? That would be correct, Clara said. I shook my head back and forth. Why, though? Why wouldn't I be able to play again? After donating your kidney, you will only have one kidney left. So you want to be extra cautious about protecting your remaining kidney. Mixed emotions entered my mind. Clara continued. The doctors will tell you not to take part in any contact sports. This includes boxing, MMA, and football. My face fell into my hands. But, Clara, football isn't a fighting sport. Those other two are, but not football. Yes, I understand what you're saying, but football is considered a contact sport, with all the hitting that happens. Especially how the hits are done, hitting in the body hard in the area where your kidney is. It's just not safe. Too risky, Clara said. I leaned back in the chair, slouching down. So I guess this Friday's game will not only be a chance to win state, but will also be my last game ever? Well, Andy, it doesn't have to be your last game. If you don't donate, then you can continue on with your high school football career. I lowered my head. Yeah, but then my best friend died. No, the state championship game will be my last. I'll get a win at state, and when I save my friend's life, I'll take a win there, too. Clara stood up from the desk, walking next to me. She sat down in an empty chair. I want you to remember, Andy. You have to do a bunch of tests. You might not even be a match. I leaned closer to Clara's chair. Well, then, let's get these tests started. Clara smiled. Okay, Andy. There's one last thing I need to go over with you. I'll bring Dr. Yang back in to help me. I started to get impatient. This meeting lasted longer than I wanted it to. What's the last thing I need to go over? Clara stood up from the chair. You need to know the risks of the surgery and donation. She opened the door. Dr. Yang, I'm ready for you. Dr. Yang reappeared in the room. So, are we ready to go over the risks? Clara nodded and Dr. Yang sat down behind his desk. This scared me. I guess I didn't think of the negatives that come with surgery. Dr. Yang interlocked his fingers together. Mr. McDonald, before we even start any tests, I need to discuss the risks. I glanced at Clara. She smiled. Dr. Yang continued. With any surgery, especially a major surgery like this, there's always a risk. What risks? I asked. For one, there's the anesthesia, which is generally safe these days. It could have some risks. They include post-operative confusion, heart attack, pneumonia, and stroke. My stomach sank in. Just the sound of these risks scared the crap out of me. Also, just with the surgery itself, there are risks. These include dying from blood loss. Yikes. Infection, major scarring, pain at the incision site, which could last the rest of your life. Dr. Yang said with a blank expression. I cleared my throat, an attempt to fight through the nerves. Dr. Yang leaned back in his chair. He placed his hands behind the back of his head. So, now that you're aware of the risks and everything, do you still wish to proceed? To be perfectly honest, I did not want to go on with this. The idea of losing my football career and the chance of something bad happening made me cringe. But the image of Chase lying unconscious in his hospital bed, tubes down his throat, made me realize that I'm making the right decision. Yes, 
I want to see if I can donate my kidney. I need to try. Dr. Yang jumped up from his chair. Great. We'll get you started right away. Normally the process takes some time, but Chase needs a kidney as soon as possible. Follow me, Andy. I'll take you down for the first test. The first test involved me peeing in a cup. Taking a urine test was vital to check the function of my kidneys. Dr. Yang said he'd get the results in 24 hours. After the urine test, Dr. Yang had me take a glucose tolerance test. This would see if I was diabetic or not. After the glucose tolerance test, Dr. Yang gave me a physical. After the physical, Dr. Yang brought me down to a radiologist. Dr. Caesar, the radiologist, told me to lie down on a scanning table. He hooked me up to an IV to administer some radioactive material into me. Yes, I know what you're thinking. Radioactive material? This scared me as well, but Dr. Caesar told me the radioactive material would make my kidneys glow on the CT scan. This would give the doctors a good look at my kidneys. So Dr. Caesar gave me the radioactive stuff, and to be honest, I hated it. I went inside the machine so I could take pictures of my kidneys. I had to wait a few minutes for all the pictures. The problem was the radioactive stuff he pumped into me made me feel like I had to take a massive pee. To make things worse, it then started to feel as if I was peeing. So weird. When the machine brought me back out, I wanted to jump up and run to the bathroom. Once I made it to the bathroom, I couldn't pee. After the CT scan, Dr. Yang sent me home. By now, it was late in the day, a little after ten. I honestly didn't mind. This day wore me out. So much ran through my mind on the ride back to my house. Chase's dad insisted he'd give me a ride home. Walking inside my house, a big yawn left my mouth. My tiredness would get a big jolt, and I don't mean a jolt of energy. Andy, where have you been all day? Oh, hi, Mom. Don't just hi me. Where have you been all day? My mother rushed down the stairs, stopping in front of me. I asked you a question. Andy, where have you been all day? Whoa, calm down, Mom. My mother scared me. I've never seen her this mad in my life. She appeared to have been drinking. Her eyes were red. Her speech slurred. Plus, I smelled alcohol coming off of her breath. Don't tell your mother to calm down. You thought I wouldn't find out? Find out what? I asked. But somehow, I knew the answer. My mother started to stutter. She lost her balance, falling toward the floor. I reached out and grabbed her by the arm. Let me go, boy. You're trying to leave me like your father did. What do you mean? I'll never leave you, Mom. I helped her up to her feet, setting her against the wall. Mom, you're drunk. You need to go to bed. She threw her arms out at me. I, I just can't lose you, Handy. Not you, too. Suddenly, my mother lost balance again. I caught her and realized that she had passed out. After dragging her back to her room and placing her in the bed, I noticed the empty alcohol bottle. I searched around the room looking for the sleeping pills. They weren't in her room, so I checked the bathroom, in the medicine cabinet. The pill bottle sat in its normal spot. After unscrewing the top, I counted the pills. The number of pills were the same as last night. After the incident my mother had of overdosing, I got into the habit of counting her pills every day. Since she wouldn't give up the pills, I wanted to make sure she at least only took one pill a night, as directed. I begged for her to give up the pills, but she said she couldn't. Without the pills, she would lie in bed and think of my father. I suppose I don't blame her for taking them. After putting my mother to bed, I followed suit and headed straight for bed, falling asleep as soon as my head hit the pillow. Monday morning arrived, and I luckily woke up before my mother. I checked in her room to find her snoring away. This was a good thing. After a quick shower and a change of clothes, I began my long walk to the hospital. At the hospital, I found Dr. Yang down at the cafe ordering a hot tea. If you walk into the hospital, the cafe would be on your left. Hey, Dr. Yang! Dr. Yang spun around. Oh, hi. Mr. McDonald, how are you? Good, I'm ready for more tests. The worker behind the counter called Dr. Yang's name. His tea was ready. The steam from the tea rose beautifully up in the air. Dr. Yang took a small sip of tea. Ah, oh, that's so good. So, ready for more tests, huh? Yeah, I am. 
We walked out of the cafe and down toward Dr. Yang's office. Say, how's Chase doing? Has he woken up yet? Dr. Yang glanced at me for a split second before staring straight ahead. No, unfortunately, he has not. Once inside Dr. Yang's office, he told me something interesting. He told me that during a kidney donation, doctors normally take the left kidney. But in my case from the CT scan, they found a small kidney stone in my right kidney. Dr. Yang told me this was nothing to worry about. It would most likely pass without me noticing. But since I'm donating a kidney, they would take my right instead. He wanted to leave me the best kidney. Thank you, Dr. Yang. After discussing my CT scan, Dr. Yang pulled out a paper and looked over it. He told me the only test we had left was a screening test. They would test me for cancer and other diseases I could potentially have. The doctors also would take my blood to not only see if my blood type was a match, but also check to see if our tissues matched. Oh, in case you were wondering, I do not have diabetes and my urine test came back good. After finishing my screenings, I headed to Chase's room. Inside, I found Chase's parents sitting and staring at their son. I knocked three times, getting their attention. Oh, hello, Andy. Come on in, Mrs. Anderson said. She jumped up and hugged me tightly. Mr. Anderson stood up and reached his hand out to me. Just before I grabbed his hand to shake it, Mr. Anderson pulled me in for a gigantic hug. After we got the hugs out of the way, I walked over to Chase. He lay so peacefully, yet it was so sad. My best friend, the dude who saved my life, stuck in this situation. He walked into my life when I needed it the most. Now, look at him. Why would this happen to a good person? I turned to face Chase's folks. Hey, if everything goes good with the tests, and they are so far, I plan on donating my kidney the day after the state game. Mrs. Anderson's eyes lit up. When is the state game? Friday. I glanced back at Chase. This Saturday I'm going to save my friend's life. Are you sure this is what you want to do? Mr. Anderson asked, as he walked over to observe his son. I just... Hope that we didn't pressure you. With a serious expression on my face, I looked at Mr. Anderson and said, No, you did not pressure me into anything. Both of Chase's parents grabbed me, and we shared an emotional group hug. The serious expression I placed on my face wouldn't last too long, as a familiar slur scream entered my ears. Andy! Andy! You'd better not, Andy! Our group huddled dispersed, as we all turned to face the entrance of the room. Stumbling inside the room was none other than my mother. Mom, what are you doing here? You know darn well what I'm doing here! She entered the room and lost balance, falling over. Mr. Anderson grabbed her, preventing my mother's head from slamming into the wall. Please, Mom, you need to leave. You've been drinking again. Mrs. Anderson stepped closer to me. What's going on, Andy? She leaned closer to him, whisper in my ear. Why is your mother out in public if she's intoxicated? My mother threw her arms away from Mr. Anderson. She stumbled closer to me. Your daddy left me. I won't let you leave me too. You're coming home with me. I stepped back. My legs hit Chase's bed. Mom, please get out of here. A nurse entered the room. The commotion caught her attention. Is everything okay in here? My mother swung around to face the nurse. No, everything isn't okay. My husband died and left me. Now my son wants you guys to take his kidney so he can die and leave me too. Everyone in the room remained quiet, not sure what to say. My mother continued on with her rant. You can't take it. I'm his mother and I won't allow it. The nurse ran out of the room. Mrs. Anderson walked in between my mother and me. Wait, didn't you sign the paper saying that you gave Andy consent to donate his kidney? My mother stomped her foot on the floor. No, I never signed anything. Mr. Anderson walked over, placing his hand on my shoulder. Is this true, Andy? Did you lie about getting permission? As I tried to think of something to say, Dr. Yang burst into the room. 
What is going on in here? My mother turned around. She lost her balance and fell into Dr. Yang. The entire room gasped. My mother grabbed Dr. Yang's lab coat. He stepped back. Ma'am, you need to calm down. Calm down? Don't tell me to calm down! Ma'am, I will call security to get you out of here. Dr. Yang snarled. I stormed over in front of my mother and Dr. Yang. This had to stop now. Okay, everybody, stop it now! Everyone stopped to listen to me, and that's what I wanted. Look, Mom, I know you're scared of me going into surgery. Heck, I am too! I turned and pointed at Chase. But look there, Mom. That's my best friend. He's going to die if he doesn't receive a kidney. If I'm a match, I want to save him. My mother fell to her knees, bawling her eyes out. This angered me. Mom, stop. Yes, I miss Dad too, but look at yourself. You're drunk. You think Dad would want you to be drinking like this? My mother's crying stopped. She stood up, wiping her eyes dry. I walked over and grabbed her hands. I miss Dad. Every day myself. It hurts really bad. But you want to know something? What, son? I was going to kill myself by jumping out of a tall tree. But someone came to the tree that day. They called out to me, and they told me not to do it. You want to know who that person was? My mother nodded her head, yes. That person was the boy who was lying in that bed. I let go of her hands to point at Chase once more. My mother's eyes locked on my best friend. These people are my best friend's parents. I walked over and hugged both Mr. and Mrs. Anderson. Just like you. They're scared to lose their son. My eyes squinted over at Chase. And if I don't try, they will lose their son. Mrs. Anderson cried. Mr. Anderson embraced her. Dr. Yang cleared his throat. Everyone, I have some news. Good or bad, depending on who you are, Mr. McDonald, you are a perfect match for Chase. The surgery is a go, if your mother approves. Ah, ugh, my mother yelped, grabbing her chin. I reached out and took my mother's hands again. It will be okay, Mom, I promise you this. Go, have a talk with Dr. Yang and he'll tell you everything. She glanced at Dr. Yang for a second before locking her eyes back on me. But, but, you always wanted to be like your dad. Your dream was to play football like your dad did. If you donate your kidney, I think you won't be able to play anymore. Right, doctor? Yes, that's correct. Dr. Yang responded. Andy, you need to be like your dad, my mother said. Keep his legacy alive. Make him proud. Be that great football player. Don't you still want to be like your dad? A small smile formed on my face. I will be like my dad. And he would be proud of me. Just like dad, I want to save a life by giving someone my kidney. Chapter 15 Sometimes in life, you get hit with that aha moment. Yes, I might have only been 14 years old, but I went through enough to make a 60-year-old jealous. The aha moment I speak about now would be for my mother. After spilling my heart out to her in Chase's room, in front of his parents, and in front of Dr. Yang, that moment hit her. She grabbed me and held me tight. You can donate your kidney, Andy. Three days had passed since that day, and my mother hadn't taken a sip of alcohol. I enjoyed seeing her not tipsy all day long. At night, she still took her sleeping pill, but baby steps, folks, baby steps. Now, being Thursday, tomorrow we would play in the state championship game. The past week went like this for me. I'd wake up, go to school. After school, go to football practice. After practice, head over to the hospital to visit Chase. His condition had not changed. Then, after the hospital, I'd head to the ball field, in the dark. There, I'd practice throwing the football against my tree. Yep, that's how I spent my days. After the ball field, I'd go home to grab a bite to eat and watch TV till I fell asleep. 
Thursday night would be different. Watching some TV and falling asleep would not be an option. I was nervous beyond belief. Tomorrow, the state championship game. Not only the biggest game of my life, but also the last. Then, on Monday, Dr. Yang decided against a Saturday surgery. I would donate my kidney. As I lay in bed, I couldn't help but shake. Everything would be real in the next few days. Against my better judgment, I got some help so I could get some kind of sleep. I snuck into the bathroom after checking to make sure my mother was asleep. Opening up the medicine cabinet, I found my mother's sleeping pills. I dropped one in my hand, staring at the tiny pill. I tossed the pill in my mouth and then turned on the water. My mouth dipped down, sipping up the flowing faucet water. I swallowed the pill and headed downstairs to grab a bite to eat. After observing my mother every night, I found the pill worked at full effect on an empty stomach. So I waited to eat to make sure I could get some sleep. How does a 14-year-old eat a quick meal? By popping in a TV dinner. My meal tonight? Meatloaf with a side of mashed potatoes and a brownie. Of course, I'd overcook it, and the brownie would become hard as a rock, but the meatloaf tasted good. Halfway through my meal, while watching some anime cartoons on the TV, a funny feeling hit. This must have been an effect from the sleeping pill. My mother described it as a high. She even said she had hallucinations, from seeing things move to sensing movement in her bed. My mother said it felt like someone sat down on the edge of her bed. Then a wooziness overtook me. The rug that lay on the ground appeared to be moving. Laughter followed. This sensation made me feel great for a moment. What happened next, I'll never forget for as long as I live. Was it a hallucination? Or something real? I may never know the truth. As I finished my TV dinner, footsteps coming from the kitchen caught my attention. Mom? I asked, but I received no answer. Now, I didn't see my mother pass by the living room to go to the kitchen, so these footsteps scared me. A home intruder? I thought. I jumped up from the couch, knocking over my TV dinner, spilling the remaining sauce out onto the carpet. As I stood in the living room in a defensive stance, someone walked in from the kitchen. What in the world? Hello, son. I miss you. In front of me, standing in the kitchen's archway, was my late father. D Dad? It can't be you. He took two steps closer to me. Son, it is me. I've come to tell you something. What is it, Dad? Am, am I dead? The thought crossed my mind that the pill had a negative reaction with my brain killing me. No, son. You are not dead. You're alive and well. I wanted to come see you one more time, to tell you how proud I am of you. Proud of how I've used what you taught me on the football field, I asked? My dad laughed. It was great to see him laugh again. No, son. To see you embark on this journey. To give the gift of life to your friend. Tears fell from my eyes. My father noticed this and walked closer to me. So I'm doing the right thing, Dad? Yes, my son, you are. Even if it cost me my chance at a football career? The dream you wanted so bad for yourself? This dream you wanted to live through me? My father wiped my tears away. His touch felt so real. Andy. What I've learned is that life is the most precious thing a soul can have. Yes, football is fun, but the chance to save another soul is why God put us all on this earth. It's our moral obligation. I reached out and grabbed my father, squeezing him tight. Dad, I love you. I love you too, son. Never forget, no matter what happens in life, even if it's bad, I'll be there to help guide you through it. I'm always right behind you, son. Everything faded to blackness. I woke up on the couch and my head ached. As soon as I woke up, my mother walked into the room. Oh, hey, darling. You slept on the couch? I stood up, scratching my head. Uh, yeah, had trouble sleeping, and finally, 
I fell asleep on the couch. My mother walked over to her purse, which sat on the recliner. She dug inside the purse and pulled out a stick of gum. Say, Andy, I had the craziest dream last night. Your father visited me, and he told me that donating your kidney was the right decision. My legs shook. Goosebumps grew on my skin. It wasn't a hallucination. My father really did visit me. Or did my mother, who took the same pill, have the same side effect? Is everything okay, Andy? My mother asked, walking over to me. What's wrong? Ah, nothing, Mom. That that's, is a crazy dream. Did it seem real to you? I mean, did Dad seem real to you? My mother's eyes filled with tears. Yes, I woke up and turned to see his pillow. I figured he'd be lying there, but... He wasn't. We hugged and my mother left shortly after. She was still seeing the therapist and she had an appointment with him at nine in the morning. I didn't have school since they gave us off to get ready for the big state championship game. After eating some cereal, I grabbed my football and walked to the ball field. Like usual, I headed to my tree and chucked the football at it. Normally, my cell phone was on me, but on this day, I didn't bring it. With the biggest and last game of my life, I didn't want any distractions. I just wanted some time alone with my thoughts. The big game didn't start till six, so I had plenty of time. After a few hours of being at the ball field, I heard a car speeding into the parking lot. I walked out from the thickness of the trees to see the parking lot. When I reached the opening, I saw my mother's car. She jumped out of the car, screaming my name. Andy! Andy! Mom, what is it? I asked, running toward her car. I called you over and over. When I got home, I found your cell phone, so I figured you must be here and raced out as fast as I could. Why? What happened, Mom? She frowned. Chase got worse. He's really not doing good at all. If you're going to be the one donating a kidney, you need to get to the hospital as soon as possible. My face turned pale. I jumped inside the car, and so did my mother. She sped off and rushed to the hospital. We pulled into the parking lot of the hospital, and my mother grabbed my arm. Andy, sweetie, I have to ask once more. Are you sure this is what you want to do? Yes, Mom, this is what I meant to do in my life. I believe that. My mother squeezed my arm harder. I jumped back, getting my arm to slip from her grip. Andy, if you donate today, then you can't play in the championship game. You know that, right? This I didn't think of. To be honest, I came to grips with not playing football anymore. But what I wanted more than anything was to play in the state championship game. No, scratch that. Saving my best friend's life was what I wanted more than anything. Mom, I wanted to play in the state championship game, yes, but my friend's life hangs in the balance. And I must try to save him. My mother took a deep breath. Yes, I suppose you're right. Yes, I am. I opened the car door and stepped halfway out before leaning my head back inside. Let's be honest, Mom. What are the odds Chase's parents are both not a match to donate a kidney, yet me, someone not related, is a perfect match? Well, that is strange, my mother said as she nodded her head. We both jumped out of the car and ran inside the hospital. Inside, I screamed for Dr. Yang. The receptionist got on the phone and called Dr. Yang and he showed up in less than a minute. Mr. McDonald, Andy, your friend needs your kidney tonight, or he's going to die. Dr. Yang glanced over at my mother. She smiled. His eyes made their way back to me. Are you sure you want to do this? Obviously, we'll need to rush you into surgery right away. Now I smiled at my mother. Yes. I walked up to Dr. Yang. I'm ready. Let's get this game started. They took me back in a room. A nurse gave me a cap and a gown to change into. After changing, six nurses stood around me. They told me to lie down on a bed. Now, in the bed, the nurses unlocked the wheels and pushed me down the hallway to another room. Inside the new room, I saw Dr. Yang. He approached me. Hello, Mr. McDonald. How are you feeling? My arms and legs shook from underneath the blankets the nurses placed over me. Well, Doc. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't nervous. Dr. Yang chuckled. 
Well, if you are nervous, I can administer you some lorazepam. What is that? Dr. Yang chuckled once more. <laughs> it's a drug. It will calm your nerves. Both of my hands shot out from underneath the blanket. I raised both of my thumbs. Administer away, Dr. Yang. Two nurses hooked me up to an IV. Dr. Yang thanked the nurses and turned back to me. Okay, Mr. McDonald. First thing I'll do is to administer the lorazepam through your IV. This will make you feel nice and calm right away. Dr. Yang administered the lorazepam. How are you feeling, Mr. McDonald? My thumbs shot up again, this time faster. I'm good. I smiled like I'm at a total relaxed state. Dr. Yang glanced up at a monitor that hung on the top of the bed. Okay, Mr. McDonald, I'd like for you to meet our anesthesiologist. His name is Dr. Pickney. I nodded and half waved. Okay, Andy. I like to call my patients by their first name. He smiled. I'm about to administer anesthesia. Before I do, would you like me to send in a priest or anyone from what your beliefs are? Even though they gave me the drug that relaxed me, his question scared the willies out of me. Uh, no thank you. Please, nobody like that. Please? Dr. Pickney nodded his head. Okay, no worries. The thought of a priest coming into my room to give me a prayer scared me more than the surgery itself. I believed I would come out alive from the surgery. A priest would scare me and make me think I wouldn't make it. Thank you, Dr. P. I giggled, apparently because it sounded like Dr. Ping, maybe. I was too high from the medicine to remember why I laughed. Okay, Andy, I'm going to place this over your face. Now, just take deep breaths. I lifted the breathing mask. So the anesthesia blows down my mouth and knocks me out? Dr. Pickney chuckled. No, this mask just helps you breathe, that's all. I will administer the anesthesia through the IV. Dr. Pickney helped me put my mask back on. Okay, Andy, I want you to count backwards, starting with ten. I licked my lips, they were a little dry, and started my countdown. Ten. Nine. That's all I remembered. Counting down to nine. Then, blackness. Hey, Andy, how are you feeling? My eyes blinked open. In front of me, a nurse stood bending down. She had the biggest smile I had ever seen. My head ached. A cloudiness overtook me. I tried to sit up, and an enormous shot of pain hit me in the right side of my stomach. The nurse grabbed me and gently laid me back down. Lie down, Andy. You need to rest. The next thing I knew, everything faded to black. Again. The next moment I remember was waking up to find the TV in my room turned on. A house hunting show played on the TV. My head still ached. The cloudiness still overwhelmed me. I rubbed my lips together to discover that they were trapped beyond belief. A funny sensation surrounded my legs. It almost felt as if someone sat by my legs and squeezed them. I glanced down and found blankets covering my lower body. Ah! I moaned as the pain on the right side of my stomach returned. Andy! My baby! Shooting into my line of vision was my mother. She embraced me with a loving hug. Unfortunately for me, her body hid against the right side of my stomach. Ah, oh, Mom! My stomach! She jumped back, grabbing a hold of her face. Oh, baby! I'm, s I'm sorry! It's okay, Mom. So, the surgery was a success? She walked back over to me, brushing her hand through my hair. Well, your surgery took longer than expected. My eyebrow raised. What? Why? Dr. Yang said when he cut you open, he found that your right kidney had an extra artery attached to it. This they did not see in the CT scan. So he had to cut you more and lift your liver up to get to your kidney. That's right, Mr. McDonald, your kidney gave me a little surprise. I turned over to find Dr. Yang walking into my room. Hi. Ah. The pain returned as I shifted my body to the right. Dr. Yang? Lie down, Mr. McDonald. You will move around tomorrow. But for now, rest, Dr. Yang said. I nodded and lay back down. My mother whispered something into Dr. Yang's ear. He nodded and turned to face me. So, Mr. McDonald, how's your pain level right now? 
rate it on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the highest level of pain. Through the cloudiness, I could feel an indescribable amount of pain. 10, I'd say a 10. Dr. Yang grabbed the tube that was hooked up to me. He took a small bottle and a syringe. Dr. Yang extracted a small amount of fluid from the bottle. He then hooked the syringe to the end of the tube and injected that fluid into me. Mr. MacDonald, I give you a small dose of morphine. It's a powerful pain reliever. You'll feel a little out of it, but the pain should ease. As the funny sensation hit, something I should have thought about right away entered my mind. Chase, how's Chase doing? Dr. Yang smiled. Chase's surgery was a success. He hasn't woken up yet, but his vitals are looking great. Ugh, I said, fighting through mixed emotions. What you did for Chase is amazing. You gave the gift of life, Dr. Yang said. He turned to walk out of the room. In the doorway, just before leaving, he turned back to face me. Andy, you are a true hero. Dr. Yang left. I began to cry. My mother sat down on the end of the bed, sitting on my legs. What's wrong, sweetie? I just want my friend to wake up. To know what I did wasn't for nothing. What my mother said next shocked me. What you did wasn't for nothing, no matter what happens. The sacrifice you gave, the risk you took. A person could live 100 years and never do anything as humane as you did. Dr. Yang is right. You're a true hero. My mother was against me donating my kidney, so I didn't expect this. Thank you, Mom. We hugged mother and son together in the spirit of my father. I swear his presence was with us. After our hug, I couldn't help but feel the weight of my mother on my legs. Uh, Mom, my legs are starting to hurt. Oh, sorry, sweetie. My mother jumped up. She pulled down my blankets. Sleeves covered my legs. What are those? I asked. My mother rubbed her hands on the leg wraps. Dr. Yang told me these are to squeeze your legs, to keep the blood flowing, since you've been lying down. Oh, cool. Another thought entered my mind. Say, Mom, did you hear how the state championship game went? My mother sat down on the chair next to my bed. This made my legs happy. Yeah, Coach Murphy called and told me about the game. And? <laughs> we got our butts kicked. We lost 3-27. to Carl Fine played as quarterback and supposedly he struggled. This may be mean and ignorant on my part, but a smirk formed on my face. I guess Carl didn't deserve the starting spot over me. I whispered. Huh? My mother asked. You say something? I shook my head. No, I didn't say anything at all. Two days passed since I woke up from my surgery. Chase still hadn't woken up, but his kidney appeared to be working great. All his vitals seemed good. He just wouldn't wake up. The day after surgery, the nurses had me up and out of bed. This hurt like heck, but I needed to move around to get strong again. Yesterday around lunchtime, the entire football team came to visit me. It felt great seeing them. I told them how sorry I was to miss the big game, but they all assured me it was okay and how I made the right decision. In a surprising twist, Carl told me he wished I was the one leading the team in the game. After the team left, Dr. Yang brought me a notebook. Inside the notebook was pictures of the surgery. He told me how they give this to all the donors. These pictures almost made me vomit, but were cool to see. The next day arrived, my third day after surgery. Dr. Yang told me that after I made my first post-surgery bowel movement, yes, I know it's disgusting, I'd get to go home to recover. I sat in my room, eating my egg breakfast. On the TV, a classic show from the 70s played. This show apparently played all day and all night, since I didn't sleep much at night, and would always see it on. Crazy to think the hospital television would only have a few channels. I took a big bite of egg. Chewing my food, I grabbed my cup of hot tea. I sipped it. A knock at my door caught my attention. I glanced over, and what I saw made me spit my hot tea out. It was Chase. Holy moly, Chase! It's you! 
The nurse laughed while pushing Chase into the room. He was in a wheelchair. Hey, antibody, it's great to see you. Tears fell from my eyes, dripping into my hot tea. I thought you might never wake up. Chase smiled. Well, thanks to you, I did. The end. Author's Note First, I want to give you all a fact. As of this writing, about 114,000 people in the United States are waiting for a life-saving transplant. 22 people die every day from not receiving an organ in time. Every 10 minutes, a new person is added to the organ waiting list. This topic is important to me because back on June 26, 2012, I donated my kidney to a friend. I'm happy to say that my friend is doing great, and the kidney they received from me is also doing great. I hope you enjoyed my story, but even if you didn't, I hope I at least sparked your interest about becoming a registered donor, if you haven't already. Even if you don't want to donate during your lifetime, when you pass away, there are so many people who can use your organs. Heck, like money, you can't take them with you, so why not register? And if I sparked any interest in living donation, you can find out all the information you need at the Donate Life website at www.donatelife.net. As a living kidney donor, if kidney donation is something you're considering, remember this little phrase, share your spare. Thank you. Titan Fry. <laughs>